to, if we will, to give our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father, we want to thank you for another privilege to come together as a board. Lord, we want to thank you for blessing us for another month. And Lord Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our city, our town. We want to thank you for our communities. I want to thank you for the love that is in the community and this board. We want to thank you for blessing us to try to keep things in harmony. Lord, we thank you and we ask of your blessing that you will help us to do that which is right and help us to build this community. And we ask that you will continue to bless the councilman, bless the mayor, bless the town manager, bless each and every one that has a part in building this city, this town. We ask these and all of the blessings in the precious name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost we pray. Amen. 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 Nice. Yeah, all of you have had a chance to read the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, we need an approval of the minutes. I make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Any corrections or otherwise on the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, likewise. Motion carried. All right, as normal, we'll follow our agenda for tonight. And that, that first thing on our agenda is the administrative committee. Uh, and it is chaired by Councilman High. Thank you, Mayor Stallings. We have two items we need to uh, discuss tonight. Uh, the first item is that the administrative committee comes before full council tonight with a recommendation that council adopt a resolution in support of the November 3rd, 2020 special advisory referendum referendum uh, designed to levy a one quarter cent uh, county sales and use tax uh, to be used for renovations and replacement of the John A. Holmes High School and future um, school capital projects. And so um, I would put that in form of a motion and seek a second and then we can have some discussion on it. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second and a discussion. My thought is any way we can um, help the county commissioners, help the town get uh, a new facility or renovated facility at Holmes High School uh, is a good thing. Absolutely. All right. Any further discussion? And before we go any further, sometimes I forget to ask for a discussion. So anytime I do that, please correct me. So, uh, but is there any further discussion? That... Okay. If not, we'll entertain a motion. Uh, we have a motion. Oh, we have a motion. Yeah, add okay. a motion All in. those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, no, likewise. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item um, that we need to discuss tonight is an update, to update on the Human Relations uh, Commission. Uh, each of us will recall that at our uh, vision statement uh, meeting that we had earlier in the year and even prior to that we discussed a human relations commission and uh, the need that we saw for having one of those here in town um, recent national events uh, have caused us to uh, take a closer look at that and we'd like to kind of harness the momentum that we have nationally and use that locally so with that in mind on this past friday councilman bond Councilman Coleman and I, along with uh, Ms. Knighton, had a meeting with Dr. Valerie Batts, and many of you uh, know Dr. Batts, and I think I um, have Councilman Coleman and Councilman Bond support in saying this. Uh, we had a very, very productive meeting, and she's a very, very impressive lady. Um, for townsfolk that might not know her, she is the um, founder of a company called Visions, Inc., and uh, Visions Inc. Um, has a, a good track record of training and consulting 
uh, companies and municipalities and governments on uh, issues related to race and diversity and racial harmony. And during that discussion, um, we set some time frames and one of the most immediate time frames will be a four to six week time frame where we're going to name people to that committee, form that committee, and have the first meeting of that committee. Um, Anne Marie is going to help us with um, getting information out uh, to interested citizens on how to apply uh, to that. Uh, we had talked about certain uh, social media platforms. Uh, Councilman Miller discussed with me prior to the meeting the need uh, perhaps to put a couple of ads in the paper with the realization that not all of our citizens are, are active on social media uh, platforms. Uh, but we're excited about it and um, the, the purpose and the mission statement of the commission uh, will be formed once we have the members in place. Uh, but again, anything that re relates to race relations, diversity, inclusion, and confronting all the issues that are before us as a, as a country right now and as a town will be open for discussion. And it's also important for some of our citizens to know that we don't uh, view this as just a one-time uh, committee that we're setting up for the year 2020 and then we're going to shelve it and not um, have the committee uh, in the future. It's something that we want to be an ongoing active uh, commission committee that can help us move, move forward in all of these issues. So we don't need uh, any action tonight. Um, Dr. Batts is putting Dr. together a proposal. Dr. Batts is putting together a proposal uh, for us that Ms. Knighton and I will review, and we should be uh, prepared to discuss that at our committee meetings later this month. The main thing for our citizens to know is just be on the lookout for the application and the application process. We're trying to um, uh, encourage people from all different persuasions, all different uh, demographic groups uh, to come together. We want a diverse uh, committee so that we can have as many viewpoints as possible and hopefully model to the rest of our community how different viewpoints can come together and make a difference. What time frame did you say on that act? Uh, four to six weeks to six in weeks. naming the committee and the committee having their um, first meeting and then after that hopefully um, a four to five month kind of working session where we can expect some sort of report uh, from them later on in the year would be the time frame that Dr. Batts felt would be appropriate. Would Dr. Batts be, or will her role be that of a facilitator? Yes, yeah, she's going to provide um, facilitating uh, meetings, organizing meetings, um, listening to the group. To, what's that? And also as a consultant. As, as a consultant, rendering all her technical expertise that she's okay. gained uh, over, over the years and uh, any technical assistance that we need, uh, any planning for the future that we need. Uh, it's fairly comprehensive uh, what she can do and what she's willing to do. I think this was a good move to start. <laughs> I do too. Yes, I, I think, think it's great. Was, yeah, the time's right. I think <laughs> yeah, we're all absolutely. on board and yeah. from what I can hear, the committee's on board. And again, I repeat myself, but anybody that's out there listening on Zoom uh, or uh, has been following this issue, uh, we'd love to, to have you apply. And again, we'd like as, as many representative people as we can. I uh, gave Anne Marie a, a, a card from one of the town, uh, uh, what do they call it, the, the downtown group that mm. you see walking on down the street. He had mentioned that he wanted to be involved with it, so I gave that card to Anne Marie. She has that. I mentioned this too to the new coordinator of the reconciliation group. There's several people. In, in that group that I'm sure would be interested in possibly applying to this commission. So it'll be a few, uh, we, we don't know just yet the details, where to pick up an application, uh, where to submit it after it's complete. Not yet, but I would hope that that would be in place within the next day or two, certainly by the end of the week. Okay. And as I indicate, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of the selection, you only can choose ten people. That, that's that's correct. Um, that's that's a great point, uh, Councilman Bond. We discussed um, the number that we wanted on the, on the committee, 
and uh, there was a range thrown out, I believe, of like 8 to 20, mm -hmm. and uh, we felt like 8 would not give us enough um, of a cross-representation of our community. We felt like 20 might have the opportunity to get bogged down if any yeah. of you ever ever tried to do anything with 20 people. Yeah. Uh, we felt like 10 would be a good working number, and she agreed. Yeah, I agree. Change the subject, but what about the up to 40 and under grade? Where is that standing at this point? Um, I'll have to get together with uh, Anne Marie on that. We we lost a little bit of the momentum with uh, COVID-19 and also with Searsha leaving us. Um, Can't but, uh, that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but what I can do is I can get together with uh, Miss Knight and we can uh, have a report on that at the committee meetings later in the month. Okay, great. Does anyone else have any questions of HAC on this uh, human relations? I'm just so glad we're getting started on this HAC. This is, this is really yeah, it absolutely is. Yes. Yeah. And that concludes our business, Mayor Sal. Okay, thank you very much, HAC. Thank you. Okay, now we'll turn to new business. Uh, we have a resolution supporting the U.S. Economic Development Agency CARES Act grant application for Harbor Towns' strategic marketing plan. Mayor, I am really sorry. We are having a major technical problem, <laughs> and our all of our Zoom people cannot hear us. And Tammy and I are doing our best to try to troubleshoot. Um, Nancy Nichols is with us um, to help present this agenda item, and I I am we're at a loss as to why it's not working, and I'm sorry. Um, but what I would suggest um, we do, we were trying to, if you could maybe just give us two minutes. We think if we can disconnect the audio that people on Zoom will still be able to hear us. But I just need to need okay. one minute to double okay. check that with Tammy. Do you want us to move on to something else or just wait? Um, if you don't mind, just, we'll just wait. wait one second. Thank you. <laughs> I see we've got one county commissioner on here. Ron Cummings. Yeah. 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 Sounds like you were talking about going in central prison there. I was involved with the prison ministry uh, good to have that for several years. Done with called Kyla's. Yeah. Good to have the we, county budget. We went in Please. central prison uh, several times. Yeah, that's some awesome. spirit. Yeah, it's something yeah. else. It really is. Don't put a lot of work into that. Yeah. You see, you take yeah. this county manager. No, 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 it's quite an experience. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What was the guy? What was the guy today that uh, had a little rash with his daycare? I was walking out in the hall in Central Prison one day and met him. He was in that pretty shit. <laughs> So this is the first time in 17 years in extra commission field. Federal. Yeah, federal. Federal. Let me try one more time. Thought we made an improvement with the audio, but um, when we tested it yesterday, it worked like a champ, but it did not work tonight, and we're sorry. So, um, wanted to check in with our partners, 
And I'm getting all sorts of text messages. They can hear us. Yay! <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Are we ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, the next item is uh, the, the uh, economic, economic Development Agency CARES grant. So, Amory, you want to talk to us about that? I will be happy to. And Nancy Nichols, our tourism director, is with us via Zoom. And Nancy's going to um, team with me and present this um, resolution. But as I wrote to you in the agenda review memo, um, we're excited that EDA has some uh, CARES Act money that was appropriated by Congress that we think would be a good fit for a marketing um, program for our Harbor Town project. And Nancy, can you hear us okay? she be viewed on her end, down at the bottom on the left, if she can hear us? I can't see her mouth. There you go. Nancy, can you hear us? Yeah, we can't hear Nancy. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry again. I apologize. One of my best gal pals, and I can't hear her. Um, but I will go ahead and um, try to um, answer any questions that you have. But you know, the Harbor Towns, we're working on trying to get the. Um, all of the towns connected with the passenger ferry program and this grant would provide two hundred thousand um, dollars to hire um, consultants to help with identifying branding marketing um, help with a, a web page um, the um, application requires a match and so the um, harbor town groups are asking each of the towns to commit to a $5,000 cash match if the grant is successful. And we would try to um, work with some of our partners to help um, with that $5,000 commitment. You know, we've done great in the past um, working co collaboratively with Edenton Cho on Partnership, with the um, Destination Downtown, but if for some reason, you know, we get the grant and Edenton needs to give $5,000, I would come back to you with the plan about how we would, we would fund that. Um, and I'm so sorry that Nancy can't um, Zoom, Zoom with us tonight. Is Representative Goodwin, Goodwin still behind us on this issue? Absolutely, okay. he so, is. Yeah, he so is. His problem. And the team from, um, well, Nick, from UNC Chapel Hill and Bunny Saunders from Roper and Phil McMullen from Hertford and um, Peter Thompson from Elizabeth City. They're kind of the nucleus of the, the program and they're working very closely with um, the tourism directors in the harbor town. So. And um, the Albemarle Commission has agreed to be the lead agency for the grant, so they would be the fiscal agent, which is great to bring in that regional um, support. And um, Mike Irvin, the former historical commission director, is now executive director of the Albemarle Commission, and so he'll bring a lot of knowledge and expertise to the project as well. Very good. How about, how about Columbia? Is they not a part of it? Um, Columbia is a part of it. I'm sorry. Yes, they're one of the five towns. Yep. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions to, for Emory at this time? Okay, so we don't need to take any action on that. If you would, um, Mayor, we put a resolution in the packet, and if you all would agree to adopt the resolution, then we can submit that as part of the grant application. Okay, all right. I'll accept a motion to... Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. All those... 
In favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and the next is the exterior change to the former Congress building. Anne Marie, we'll call on you for that again, please. Okay, and you remember at your June 30 meeting, um, Dawson Tyler with Downey's Preservation was here and he presented the renderings um, for you to look at and be thinking about. Um, the covenants on the building or on the deed require the town as well as the Preservation Commission to approve any exterior changes to the building. And um, if you all approve the changes that you saw in, that, uh, in the rendering, then we'll go ahead and schedule a hearing with the Edenton Preservation Commission, and they too will review um, the proposed changes. Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Can we have just a little bit of discussion Absolutely. on that? I just want to make sure um, this predated my time on council, but I remember that this was a, a very high profile project with um, very strong feelings on each side. And I just want to make sure that our minutes are clear and that I'm also clear on what we're approving and not approving tonight. And as I understand it, we're just approving the change to the exterior windows that face uh, the bay, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Because yeah. the rendering that we saw had decks and all that, and um, I just want to make sure that we we're just talking about windows tonight. Yes, and we'll make sure that is reflected in the minutes and when we um, transmit to the Preservation Commission as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you. Any further discussion? Any other questions? Uh, okay. I, I've been wondering about the um, the porch. It's not a porch. Deck. 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 How many? Is it, what's the safety thing of it? How many people can be on that thing at one time? Well, that's that's what I, why I wanted to clarify. That's not even before us at, at this time. And if it ever does come before us, I would think that we would ask those questions. Um, but we're not approving that rendering that showed the debt. We're just approving the change to the the, the windows. Is that what I understand? Yeah, that's right. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. <coughs> motion carried. Anne Marie, would you like to continue with the capital project budget ordinance? We will. Police and, we, and fire vehicles. We are. Very excited. Yes, Mayor. Um, we're very excited to be presenting this um, project, capital project ordinance for you. You know that um, the town received an $85,000 grant from USDA. Remember Monica with USDA, Monica Thornton, Zoomed with you all a few months ago and um, presented the terms and the conditions for that, that grant and also um, the town was approved for a $70,000 USDA loan. And the vehicles are um, on the lot out at Friar Ford and the loan closing is set for Friday and we're um, expecting to take possession of the vehicles then. Um, and I know the, the fire chief and the police chief are um, happy to see this, this coming. It's been a, a long time coming, but we're grateful for the, the grant from USDA and then again the, the nice loan. So the council will need to adopt this um, project budget ordinance, Mayor. Any further discussion, questions? I move that we adopt. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And the next one is the appointment of a board of directors for Destination Downtown Eaton. Uh, we discussed that this morning in the DDE meeting. And uh, uh, I believe the lady's name is? Cherie Roberts. Cherie Roberts. And so the... Um the council appoints two or three members on the um, DDE board of directors, and so a term is up due to a, a vacancy. A, a member um, had to resign, and so the board um, has put forth um, Cherie as 
a recommendation for you all to make this appointment. And when she sent um, the bio to us, I just thought it was really so impressive. And um, she talks about her very first job was working at our local McDonald's in the drive-through, and she learned customer service. Um, and then she went to work at, um, remember, Creekside Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. I thought she did a good job. Yes. The entire picture of herself. Here. She did. Wow. And she, she spent um, time at Waterman's Grill as well. And she said that's where those restaurants taught her customer service. And that's a big part of what um, she provides. Now she's an owner of Vaughn's Jewelry Store. And she's just a terrific young woman. And I know she's going to be a big asset to um, DDE. So we're asking, the DDE board is asking council to um, appoint Cherie to, to serve on the board. Okay, any questions or comments? I've got nothing against uh, Ms. Roberts, but it, 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 do, does the council appoint so many members to the board? And if so, does it come through the council or does the uh, downtown destination? Tell us who to appoint. They, they recommend, they, okay. the, the DDE board recommends to you um, people to serve on the board. Okay. That seems different than us being responsible for naming the board. There's a slight difference there. I just, I don't want to bypass our responsibility for, for naming people to boards and, and have the boards tell us their name. I guess that's the question. Is that? She seems more qualified. Well, I, 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 well, Craig, Ms. Ross is, a, is oh, certainly yeah. a good person, but I didn't know, I don't want to shirk our responsibilities for, for involvement in that process. You know, the next time we have a vacancy <laughs> that the council can appoint before, you know, we will let the board, we will let the council yeah. know. Okay. And certainly, um, you know, we can talk about soliciting applications for you to look at as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's a really hard working board. I'm on I I know, it. I know and so it's, it. you know, it's, I mean, it, it works hard and Sometimes it's difficult. Um, Nelson. 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 Yeah. Nelson. And it's just you know we like to get people that are connected with the downtown and they're gonna work hard and go to these events we plan and all that. So. May I like to move that we appoint this Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor uh, of approving uh, this young lady to the. Destination downtown board. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. All those opposed? Motion carried. They have a new member. Okay, now with the time on our agenda for items that are considered timely and important. Does anyone up here? Greg? Mayor, I just had a couple. couple. Uh, just want to know what the current status uh, food lines and leash removal is over there at the uh, village uh, shopping center. So Food Lion has um, notified the property owners that they are not going to renew the next term of their lease. Their lease will officially end December 31st of 2020. And um, the Edenton Showing Partnership and the town and the county and with a lot of support from um, the chamber are working on trying to solicit um, interest from food grocers who in the past have expressed interest. So that is encouraging. We're, we're encouraged. Yep. Encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. The other issue I made is I uh, want to make sure you think we'll be on the uh, local government commission's agenda in uh, August. Uh, yes. For that yep. nine or ten thousand dollar loan approval, so we get Barnhill in here. And in here. And I think maybe the earliest we can get in here probably be, what, first of October or end of September? No, um, we're hoping that um, if the LGC approves on August 4th, then the council will be able to award Barnhill's contract on August 11th. But we'll go ahead and start teeing things up so that the contract and the um, they won't be able to get their bonds and their insurance until the contract is awarded but we want them to come in just as soon as possible. That so is. I'm hoping they'll be paving in September. Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yes, sir. Any 
Yeah. Yes, sir. Hi, the, the last meeting I met with several of the uh, downtown ambassadors, and they were expressing some concerns, mostly about lighting in the park at night. Uh, the breakwater light and, and on the far side over near the memorial, um, uh, they felt that uh, the, the darkness would uh, uh, prevent uh, the park from being secure. And I think uh, Captain Mark also might mention some uh, concerns about the park. So, I would I'd like to ask maybe uh, Mike Nichols or some other people meet with a couple of the ambassadors and just to sort of get a better idea of what they're saying that needs to be done so we might take some action on that. Sure. Was it some lights that were burned out or just not enough lights? I think the lights are out on the breakwater and, and, and with some lights that need to be installed on the far end of the park it simply doesn't have lighting. So new lighting and, and repairs to lighting I think seems to be the issue. And tied into that, uh, earlier in the year, um, I mentioned, and I was uh, talking with Sears about it also, about the possibility of having some sort of decorative lights in some of the trees. Uh, more and more towns are going towards that. And these trees down here, that's a dark area right at the foot of Broad Street. And that would look good as you're walking down there and seeing, you know, the decorative lights that you're seeing. In fact, the type that I'm thinking of, there are actually some down in the alley uh, between uh, Southern Bank and the movie theater. And I think that would uh, look good. And then also um, related to the breakwater, at some point in time, um, I would like maybe a small group of us, perhaps myself and Mayor Stallings and Miss Knighton to go um, e either walk on the boardwalk or go by, by boat. And uh, I'd like to point out a few things where I feel like we need some safety concerns and also some appearance concerns. And I've talked with uh, Captain Mark uh, about that, some things that we can just, uh, again, some of them are safety, but other things just give us a better presentation of the town. And maybe I can get together with you, Mayor Stallings, and, and uh, Miss Knight, and maybe one evening that's pretty, uh, we can go to that. Yeah. And to follow up on that, <clears throat> Jerry Smith's, well, he owns part of the road I mean, the um, land between where Granville Street turns. And it's really a road in a way. And I don't know whether that's going to road to the point it takes our, you know, some of our easement land away or whether we could ask him to, you know, whether there's way to force him to fix it. I mean, you notice how much it's, it, What's, you know. Right specifically around that thing? Right in front of Richard Elliott's house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, where, where the town, I think where the town property is, it's fine. And then you just come back and it's just falling apart. So, and I, I want to also comment that I think the people like Tosh and all those guys in the morning, I mean, I walk at 6 o'clock, and they are all out there at 6 o'clock in the morning, watering, blowing the, I mean, they're, those guys do a tremendous job, and I don't, I, don't, I guess they get thanked, I mean, but they just really are, they take great pride in it, and, you know, they're, they've done a great job, so. Tosh works hard. Yeah, he really does. I think it's the time the, the cruise and that piece that we uh, publicize also trying to promote our harbor for a uh, use more by uh, by uh, people coming in and, and, and using the harbor. And this might tie into some of your, your uh, observations of how to make that more attractive for, for boats coming in. Is, it, is there any way to put gas down there? Just, just a, I know we talked that's, about it over That's on in your vision statement. <laughs> and I, love it. I mean, I think that we'd get more boats if we had gas. Yeah, I, I, I agree. agree. Uh, <laughs> you, why does Scotty take this? Else? We get a, we'll look for a grant. Why does Scotty take this? Another issue about the other I don't know. Kind of curiosity. I mean, maybe we should talk about it. a liability. Might have probably. Anyone else have anything from up here? I'd like to ask a question. Did, uh, uh, Marie, do we have anything to do with that house that's supposed to be built across in front of the police station? That's Habitat. Habitat for Humanity is building that house. Habitat? Yes. Oh. Speaking Ain't of nobody houses. been working on it for the last two months. Speaking of houses, how about the house on Alpha Street? Did that couple get that house? As of yesterday, yes. Yeah. We spoke with them today. Nobody 
um, submitted an upset bid for the house that you were put up for sale at 136 East Albemarle Street. They closed on one of them. Was that the one? That that would be closed on 123 okay. East Gale. Okay. okay, so if that's it for up here, is anybody in the audience or on Zoom that uh, has anything they want to talk to us about? Mayor, um, so I do have, you're in public comment? Yes. Okay. I had received a statement, because um, you know we're not taking comments via Zoom. People can email comments to me prior to the meeting. And I did receive um, a statement from Tamika Ward Satterfield, and Tamika um, is a former resident of Edenton. Um, she married um, her childhood sweetheart, Darren Satterfield, who also was from Edenton. And um, as a matter of fact, I believe Tamika was, uh, I know she was the class valedictorian for her high school class because she was in my stepdaughter's class and I remember Tamika giving her speech. But Tamika sent this um, statement and asked me to read it to you. And it says, um, good evening, mayor and council members. I am Tamika Ward Satterfield, a former resident, born and raised in Edenton, a member of John A. Holmes High School class of 1994. My husband and I are blessed to have many family and friends, including our parents, that still reside in Edenton. Because of this, we visit home often and continue to be concerned about the town and its happenings. I would like to urge the town council to remove all Confederate monuments, statutes, and markers that are in the town of Edenton. I was encouraged while reading the statement on solidarity that's on the town's website, but as an African American that is proud to call Edenton home, this statement seems hollow as long as the statutes, monuments, and markers celebrating the Confederate War and its soldiers and allies remains on public grounds and buildings. Even though I had a great childhood in Edenton, I was a victim and or an observer of several racist incidents. The statement on solidarity is a great first step, but it's pointless and even insulting without action. I currently serve on the Human Relations Commission of Orange County, North Carolina. I'm excited to see that you are planning to add this resource, but it will take some time to get it off the ground. I understand that there is a 2015 law that can be cited by cities and counties as a hindrance to removing the Confederate statutes. However, in the current social and political climate, we see these statues being removed from public grounds daily. I encourage the town council to use all the same leverage and allowance that has been employed by Governor Cooper, the Wilmington City Council, and the Pitt County Commissioners, to name a few. The relics of the Confederacy and white supremacy should be removed now. Thank you for your time and service. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, uh, we're going to, according to statute, we're going to go. I'm sorry. Larry wanted to speak. Okay, please. The floor is yours. Tell us who you are and what you're going to talk about. Okay. My name's Larry McLaughlin. My address? Do I need to say that? 118 Butternut Lane? All right. I just uh, thought I'd come tonight because I saw that you had the uh, resolution in support of the quarter cent sales tax. And um, I'm not representing the Board of Commissioners, uh, but I just would like to say that when the commissioners voted on that resolution, the vote was unanimous. Um, we all feel that we need to support public education. We all feel that the high school is definitely in need of repair and um, 
you know, the, the bond issue was a, a, a recent thing before the, uh, the public. Um, in lieu of that, um, which we'll probably address again for the 2022 cycle, um, we thought that a sales tax increase would give us a little money for capital improvements. Um, the high school has numerous needs. Um, the quarter cent sales tax increase is, pro is projected to garner about $308,000. Um, to say that's a, a lot of money, it, it, it's not. Um, as you all know, uh, buildings, uh, an HVA system, a roof, uh, any number of things are breaking down all the time. $308,000 goes pretty quickly, but it's something. The other thing that needs to be said is this is a referendum that we voted for. So in November, the public will have the opportunity to vote for this or not. Um, that evening when we voted for that resolution, we passed two resolutions. One was to put the quarter cent sales tax on the ballot in November. The second was to designate that the money would be used for capital improvements at the high school. Now that resolution is not really binding because another board of commissioners could designate it for anything else they want. But that's our intention, all right? And to, and to let the public know that as a board of commissioners, we want to support the school, public school education, we want to improve the facilities for the students, and, and we, want, uh, we want the best we can get for, for Edenton and Chowan County. And as you all know, a quarter cent sales tax increase is paid by everyone, not just property owners. And it's also paid by visitors, which is, um, is kind of nice too. And so when somebody stops by at the Hess station and gets a soda and a, a nab, they're, they're helping us out. So uh, that's kind of cool. But anyway, I wanted to come and say that I appreciate you um, putting this on your agenda and, uh, and encourage, encourage you all to um, get out and, and vote to uh, past the uh, quarter cent sales tax increase. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have anything they want to bring before us? If not, at this time, uh, we need to go into closed session. Uh, Mayor, I do have one thing. I, I would like to uh, suggest to the council maybe consideration of our closed session evaluation at our next meeting rather than tonight. The evaluation form just came out today and uh, I haven't had time to look at it. I'd like to do a good job on it and think through the questions that are being asked. And I'd feel more prepared uh, if we could do that maybe at a later, later date than tonight. That, <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that a motion? Uh, Mayor, would yes. it be appropriate, could, could you go into closed session and I will re review the process with you so you'll understand how the evaluation is done? You wouldn't, won't do the evaluation, or I could do that now. I can explain it so that... Uh, yeah, that would, be, that would be helpful. If we had a veteran town council here that's been through this process before, I don't even think uh, Councilman Coleman would be suggesting that, that it's the first time around for... Uh, the two of us and uh, we don't understand the process so you may be able to answer a lot of our questions speaking now in sure. open session. Sure, and, yeah. and, and that was my, my, my thought was for you to hear from me how the process works mm -hmm. and so the town um, council is responsible for evaluating my performance and um, we have or I have taken my job description and broken it down into about six core responsibilities. And that's how we do the evaluations for all of our employees. The job description is broken down into core responsibilities. And then you are to evaluate the performance and rate them based on, you know, is it 
am I failing? There's a scale. It's like, you know, failing, um, needs needs improvement, meeting, meeting, <laughs> but yeah, exceed, and then outstanding. But we took the advice of our consultant who helped us with the establishing, and nobody's outstanding. So best you can be is exceeding, and you always got to strive to to do better. Um, and so then the council would, um, you all would get your thoughts together based on that instrument and at a, a meeting um, in closed session, I am not present. You ask me to leave and I go sit nervously in the lobby and wonder <laughs> what you're talking and what you're saying about me. No. And Murray of course leaves because it's closed session. And then um, you reach consent, you try to reach consensus on all of those areas. And then you invite me back into um, the room and you have discussion with me about, you know, what areas um, do you feel like I need to work on? Are there areas where we need improvement? Um, are there areas where you think I'm, you know, doing well? Or areas where I'm, you know, spending too much time doing this and I need to be doing that? So it's a healthy, um, important exercise and um, then um, you know what we do with all the other employees is based on the um, average of the um, the rankings you know if if you feel like I'm meeting expectations um, I think I had sent late and it was very late this afternoon kind of a description of compensation. Um, so employees that meet expectations, can you help me, Tammy? So based on where your salary falls in the um, job classification, in the salary range, if you're um, meeting standards, then um, the employee receives a market adjustment and that for this year starting in July is 1% plus they would be eligible for a 1.5% increase so if you're meeting standards um, and you're in that mid you're below the midpoint um, you're eligible for a 2.5% increase um, if you're above the midpoint and that is really um, to help prevent compression, um, it's a little bit less. You're eligible for the 1% increase and then a 1% cost of living. So um, that was our thought, uh, my thought tonight was to talk to you about the process and then you think about... Um, so the actual valuation and using that tool was not going to be tonight anyway? I th well, I didn't think you would be able to do all of that tonight, right. that we needed to spend some time okay. reviewing the process. Have you sent us that tool? I just sent it late this afternoon, okay. so yeah. 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 I think this is new for us, too. I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I mean, it's not that complicated. I mean, yeah, it really isn't. Yeah. You, you no. She's got it spelled out for you. But it's important. It's a you know it's a good way for you to give me feedback. I get um, you know we tell the employees that there really should be no surprises when you sit down and have your evaluation. Um, but it is a good time to kind of check in and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, and if there are areas that need improvement, you know this is where the rubber re beats the road. So, but I'm really proud of Tammy our HR person because we, she has worked really hard um, implementing our, this new system. It's about two years old. The council um, <coughs> spent a lot of time and money um, developing this system and Tammy makes sure that every employee is um, evaluated on their in the month of their anniversary date and make sure that um, the department heads and supervisors get the training that they need to conduct the um, evaluation and that all of our new employees, they get their job description, they understand what um, their, their responsibilities are. So we haven't had any surprises so far. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. 
I'll go with the pleasure of the group, whatever y'all want to do. Uh, if y'all want to do it tonight, or if you want to put it off until the next time, you y'all, what's the pleasure of the group? I'm going to do it tonight. Sir? I like to do it tonight. Okay. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't feel qualified to, to respond. Yeah, I, to I, haven't used, I haven't even seen the tool yet. I mean, I would <laughs> like to. And, and maybe maybe we're making it more difficult than it's going to be, but just with it being our first time, I don't even know the tool, and I would like to. I'm sure it's going to be high marks for me, but I'd like to look at the tool and give it some thought, not the first time in a meet. And if we did it tonight, it would be the first time that I'd given it any thought. It would be right now. And I. That's the attorney version. <laughs> Y'all just tell me what you got one saying yes and one saying no, so I mean I'm okay. I'm like I'm like I'm past the group, but I don't know if it's doing tonight. Okay, all those that want to do it tonight, please signify by raising your hand. All those that want to wait. I, I don't mind waiting for anybody. Else. <laughs> you don't get a buck. I, I don't know. I mean, whatever makes everybody I, I don't care. One way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're outvoted, so that's the way that's the way we do business. So Okay. All right. All right, at this time then, uh, according to statute NCGS 143-318-11A, uh, we're gonna go into closed session. We'll ask for a motion to go in closed session. So moved. Got a motion? Need a second? Second. Got a motion and a second, please. Everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Anne Marie, we'll ask you and Tammy and Mari. Mari to leave. Okay. <laughs> Let's <laughs> But Craig, you, you can't open yours. <laughs> Huh? Okay, so what we're gonna do? <laughs> Mayor, I don't think it's appropriate when you have several members that don't have it. Okay. You haven't so we'll, seen it. Yep. Alright, then we need a we need a motion to come out of Yep. Okay, I need another motion to come out of closed session. So Need a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye, admit, which means we will wait until our next meeting, which will be our August meeting. Is that correct, Emory? Um. Oh, let's. Would this be done at the community? Why are they putting on a mask over there? Huh? Why are they putting on a mask? Because they, 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 they will share. Uh, I thought we would do that at the community meeting. <laughs> 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 I thought we would do that at the community meeting. We could do it um, at this, a special meeting advertised on the 27th. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, close. All those in favor, please say the Bible and say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And that completes our agenda for this evening. So, need a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. Adjourn. I just put it on because he and I.